everybody. Welcome back to the Movie Melee Summer Series Singles Tournament. We're in the semifinals now, so this is getting pretty serious. We got our first, uh, at least first one that we're filming, the first semifinals match, which will advance the, the advancing player today, the winner that is, will be going on to play for the title, for the vacant title, after Andrew James Mars vacated it. And we got Matthew Chen, the number seven seed, going up against Jeremy Adams, the number 14 seed. Both players playing absolutely fantastic so far this year. And joining me on the table is one Jack Pinchuk. How are you doing today? Oh, I am doing quite well today. It's been a, it's been a long one, but I'm here, and I'm very excited for this match. Two players at the top of their game, and I'm very excited to see what happens here. Yeah, absolutely. Jeremy obviously made it here from uh, beating Antonio in a very solid performance, and Matthew beating uh, me. Which, you know, it, would, it was uh, I basically got my ass kicked in that match, so no hard feelings there, but. We'll start off talking to a lower-ranked competitor, uh, Jeremy Adams. Uh, Jeremy, you've been playing lights out so far this entire tournament. Uh, you're going up against another faction mate today in uh, Matthew Chen. How do you, what are your thoughts on the match? I I feel great to have made it this far. You know, I, I took a step away from the from the league for, for quite a, a time there and to come back and at least so far be able to keep up with the great talent that, that we that's joined the league in my absence has been awesome. But today I play Matthew, who's just one of the, the brightest lights. And I, I know that firsthand being in a faction with him, great guy and a great player. So I'm excited, but I just have to say, I was just on a week long uh, cruise going to Mexico. So I'm like, got that kind of mindset. I, I don't know if I'm going to be fully there, but the good thing is I did play trivia matches on the cruise and I won three trophies, but the bad news is it was against like middle-aged people and they were all, movie trivia so i don't know maybe it was maybe i'm in a good place maybe i'm not but in any case i'm excited and and hoping hoping to get one step closer to that title for sure interesting it's always good to get uh training in wherever whenever possible wherever you get (laughs) (laughs) well good luck to to you today we'll bring in your opponent for this evening the number seven seed in the tournament matthew chen matthew you're going up against jeremy i don't know if you've ever played him in any uh league beforehand uh but should uh thoughts on today's match but go ahead <laughs> yeah I, I honestly didn't think i would make it this far so you know now that i'm here i'm just you know really happy to just play jeremy's a great guy you know we're on the same factions i, I know how great he is and uh like he hasn't shown any rest since his return so i just feel like we're in for a really fun match today yeah that's fair so we will get right into it starting with round number one of the match which will go like this each player or The players will be asked eight questions in eight different categories of movie trivia, which they will answer individually on their whiteboards in 15 seconds. Each player has three repeats and one challenge to use for the entirety of this match. And uh, if you get all eight questions right in this round, you will be asked a bonus question. Any questions before we get started? Awesome. All right. So then your first question of the night will come in the category of animated. What Disney film features a character that is given the title Great Prince of the Forest? Do you like the Disney films? Uh, yes, for the most part, I do. There's a couple, uh, a couple in there that have aged like milk left out in the hot sun, but uh, I, I, I'm a fan of most of it. Four, three, two, one. Four icons is better. Pins down. Uh, we will go to Matthew first. Bambi. And Jeremy? Bambi. Bambi is correct. Clean sweep as we get into the second question of the match, which will be in the category of action adventure. Your question is, who stars as Inspector Chan in the Police Story franchise? These movies are pretty sweet. They've been on my watch list forever. I just haven't gotten around to them yet. I've heard good things, though. I haven't seen them in a while, but they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to uh, Jeremy first. Jackie Chan. And Matthew? Jackie Chan. Both correct. Staying tied to a piece as we get into your next question in the category of comedy. What 2000s comedy has supporting performances from Christopher Walken, Henry Winkler, and Sean Astin? Who's your favorite of these actors? You know, a normal person uh, would say Christopher Walken. However, I do have a soft spot in my heart for 
for uh, Sean Astin. Five, four, as three, some two, may know. one. Hands down, I understood that reference. Uh, Matthew? I said click. And Jeremy? 50 first dates? Click is correct. Oh. So Matt, Matthew takes the one point lead there as we get into your fourth question. Which will come in the category of the 2010s. Your question is, what specific kind of business does Susan own in nocturnal animals? I didn't realize people disliked this movie that much until I joined this community. There's a lot of people that really don't like it. I, that's that's fair. I've, I've heard very mixed things about this but, movie oh, for the most part. Three, Haven't two, seen one. I'll repeat. I'll get a repeat. All right. That is Jeremy's first repeat. For sure. yeah. All right. Sorry, go ahead. question once again. And, yeah. No, you're good. Your question once again in the category of the 2010s. What specific kind of business does Susan own in nocturnal animals? Yeah. Recently, though, I, I was listening to a podcast where they mentioned this film a couple of, a couple of times, and they didn't have very many nice things to say about it. So really, I think it's really yeah. good. I thought Cody hated it. I'm confused by the private chat. Five, four, Couldn't three, tell two, one. Pens down. He's probably being sarcastic. Uh, Jeremy? Art gallery. And Matthew? I said publishing company. Art gallery is correct. So tied yeah. up three to three as we get into your next question, which comes in the category of recent releases. Name both lead actors in 2022's Spirited. This looks like the opposite of my vibe, this movie, so I avoided it. That's fair. Uh, I, I heard nothing but great things about it from one Caleb uh, Coho, uh, and I just Four, never bothered to watch three, it. Two, one. Pens down. We will go to uh, Matthew. Uh, will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds. And Jeremy? Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell. Both correct. Now we get into your next question, which comes in the category of horror. Your question is, how do Claudia and Madeline die in Interview with the Vampire? Now, Jack, have you ever interviewed a vampire? Uh, I can't say that I have. However, I have been, well, I've encountered a couple people that I would consider uh, vampires Four. in the sense that they're blood-sucking Three. parasites. But, you know. Two, one, tens down. That's fair. Jeremy. Sunlight burns them. And Matthew? I said burn to death. We will accept both answers, yeah. So then your next question will come in the category of sports. In Jerry Maguire, what does Jerry take from the office after he is fired? We're on a roll here with movies I haven't seen, but have owned on Blu-ray for the longest time. That's fair. <laughs> just never gotten around to I'm a big fan of taking things after being fired. Five. Me too. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. We will go to Matthew. I don't. I just said Jersey. And Jeremy? Fish. Fish is correct. And with that, uh, Jeremy takes one point lead as we get into the final question of the round, which comes in the category of war. Your question is Alan Arkin, Martin Belsom, and Art. Garfunkel, star in what uh, 70s war film? Yeah, this is a movie. I, Can't talk about it. Ooh, not gonna lie, I didn't know one of these people <laughs> acted until roughly Five, 30 seconds four, ago. Three, two, one. I'll take a repeat on it. Okay, that is Jeremy's second repeat. All right. Your question once again in the category of war. Alan Arkin, Martin Belsom, and Art Garfunkel star in what 70s war film? You didn't know that Alan Arkin acts? That's crazy. I know, right? It's it's the weirdest thing. You'd think I would have seen some of his movies, but <laughs> I guess not. Five, four, three, two, one. 
hands down, we will go to Jeremy. I absolutely know the movie, and I cannot think of the title right now. They have made a remake of it with George Clooney. I cannot think of the title. <laughs> Matthew? Hey, I'm probably, I don't know. I just said Catch-22. That is correct. Catch-22 <laughs> is correct. Oh, wait, no. Okay. I, I, uh, I know. With that, Matthew ties up the score at six to six, coming out of round number one as we get into round number two, which will work like this. Each competitor will get the chance to spin at the wheel, which will decide their fate, what questions they will be answering in what category. If they don't like the category that they spin the first time, they can spin a second time, but they must keep what they land on there. Uh, each question worth two points unless they uh, check down a multiple choice, in which case it's worth one point. The categories on the wheel tonight are A24 Horror and Recent Releases, which are Matthew's strengths, as well as Stephen King Adaptations and 1980s, which is Jeremy's strengths, as well as the general categories of War, Biopics, Directors, and 2000s. So, uh, Matthew, since you are the higher-seated competitor, would you like to spin first or defer to Jeremy? Um, I'll defer. All right. So, Jeremy, this will be your first spin. You land on the category of directors. Would you like to keep that or spin again? I will keep it. All right. So, uh, Jack, you want to read him his questions in directors? Sure. All right. I Jeremy, are you ready? There go. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right. Jeremy, are you ready for your questions in the category of directors? Yes. All right. Your first question. Who directed the 1982 film Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid? Carl Reiner. That is correct for two points. Uh, your second question. Who directed Win Win? Thomas McCarthy, or Tom McCarthy. That is correct for two points. Yeah. That's correct for two points. Yes. Uh, your third question. Darren Lynn uh, Boothman directed the most films in what horror franchise? Saw. That is correct. We'll get into your penultimate question in the category of directors. Your question is, 2005's The Interpreter was the final film directed by whom? Sidney Pollack. That is correct for two points. And your final question, who directed Wind Talkers? John Woo. For the clean sweep, that is correct for three points. All right, so Jeremy gets a score up to 16, and Matthew stays at six as we get into Matthew's spin now. Which, once I find the wheel again, there it is. It's fine, I'll cut back in. All right. I'll just start from the, from the top there, All right? All right, so with that, Jeremy gets a score up to 16. Matthew's still at six as we get into uh, Matthew's first spin at the wheel. So you land on the category of biopics. Would you like to keep that or spin again? This isn't terrible, but I feel like I need a better category to catch up. So I'm going to spin again. OK. So then the category that you will be stuck on is stuck with. Free respin. Not directors. <laughs> <laughs> and on the category of the 1980s. Yeah. So Matthew, I will be reading your questions in the category of the 1980s. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Your first question. What 80s drama features a cast that includes Judy Dench, Christian Bale, Robbie Coltrane, and Emma Thompson? Five, four, three. I'll go multiple two. choice. All right, your options are A, Empire of the Sun. B, Mona Lisa, C, Henry V, 
or D, Mississippi burning? C? C is correct for one point. Next question. In the money pit, Walter has what profession? I'll go multiple choice. Your options are A, a doctor, B, a contractor, C, a lawyer, or D, a professor. Um, lawyer? But that is correct for one point. Your third question. Who plays Luis's cellmate, Valentin uh, Arig... Sorry, let me try that again. Who plays Luis's cellmate, Valentin Araguay in Kiss of the Spider Woman? Multiple choice. Your options are A, Raul Julia, B, Andy Garcia, C, Edward James Olmos, or D, Miguel Ferrer. A? A is correct for one point. It's now your penultimate question in this category. How does the kid's father try to kill himself in Purple Rain? Multiple choice. Your options are A, hang himself, B, overdose on pills, C, cut his wrists, or D, shoot himself? Um, I'll go B. B is incorrect, so Jeremy, for the one-point steal, is it A, hang himself, B, overdose on pills, C, cut his wrists, or D, shoot himself? Is it D? D is correct for one point. Now your final question in this category, Matthew. What is the fake name that Ferris tries to use in order to get into the fancy restaurant in Ferris Bueller's Day Off? We're looking for the full name. Full name. Um... Five. Four. Multiple Three. choice. Your options are A, Abe Froman, B, Al Pringles, C, John Fromage, or D, Jack Prongles. Five. Can you again repeat of the options? Certainly. Yeah, your options again. A, Abe Froman, B, Al Pringles, C, John Fromage, or D, Jack Prongles? Um, A? A is correct for one more point. So coming out of round number two, I have the score at Jeremy in the lead, 17 to 10. Is that what you have, uh, Jack? That is what I have. Yes. All right. So then we will get into round number three, which will work like this. It is the pick your poison round. Each competitor will get to choose from a list of categories what they want for their one, their two, their three, and their four point question, each ascending in difficulty. Uh, the questions that they could choose from tonight are John Carpenter, 1980s, sci fi fantasy, romance, Jane Fonda, mystery thrillers, 2010s, or actors, actors and actresses. So we let them pick their categories right now, and we'll be right back. We're back. The competitors have picked their categories. We will start with Matthew since he is down seven points. Jack will be reading his questions in round three. All right, Matthew, uh, your one point question in the category of mystery thriller Who plays Amy Dunn in Gone Girl? Rosamund Pike. Pike. That is correct for one point. 
Your two-pointer comes in the category of the 2010s. What 2010s Liam Neeson film features his character finding a large amount of money in a bathroom? Nonstop. That is unfortunately incorrect. The uh, answer was the commuter. Ah, oh, damn. One of the is the yeah. That one. So we are now in a Aren't situation. Aren't those the same movie? <laughs> They're the same movie. Actually, one's on the plane and one's on the train. So, yeah. So we are now in a situation where Matthew will need to hit his three and his four pointer to stay alive. Yes. Uh, so in the game, I... not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that. Uh, you never know. Anyway, Matthew, uh, your three-point question in Actors and Actresses. Jared Leto, Vanessa Redgrave, and Jeffrey T Tambor have supporting performances in what 90s film? Repeat the question. All right. Once again, your question. Jared Leto, Vanessa Redgrave, and Jeffrey Tambor have, support, uh, have supporting performances in what 90s film? Repeat. I, I, Two. I think Jack was lagging with the countdown, so I wasn't sure when I remember we were on. All good. Uh, as your second repeat, uh, once again, your four point question, or three point question, sorry, in actors and actresses. Jared Leto, Vanessa Redgrave, and Jeffrey Tambor have supporting performances in what 90s film? Four, three, two, one. Final repeat. Uh, Three-pointer in actors and actresses. Jared Leto, Vanessa Redgrave, and Jeffrey Tambor have supporting performances in what 90s film? Five, four, three, two, one. No, it's not coming to me. And your winner, by way of technical knockout, Jeremy Adams. The correct answer we were looking for was Girl Interrupted. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we will get to post-match interviews right now, starting with our unfortunate second-place finisher today, Matthew Chen. Uh, Matthew, hell of a run this season. I mean, yeah, you're picking up right where you left off last year with a killer year. You're having a killer year this season. Uh, how, what are your thoughts on your uh, performance tonight and your performance in this tournament as a whole? Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm really proud of my performance. You know, I wasn't expecting to keep up with Jeremy in round one. Uh, I don't tend to always do that well. You know, round one's always hit or miss for me, so I'm glad I was able to keep it a tie game there. It just came down to round two, unfortunately. got I got his strength of 80s. Um, was able to get through at least with multiple choice, but I think the gap was just too big for me too. Yeah, yeah that's like fair. I mean, this is your second time being one match away from the title shot, so it's clear that you're here to stay. You're going to be – you're one of the top dogs here in Melee. Is there anyone that you would like to face when you come back? Oh, um, honestly, um, I'm happy to face anyone. No, no, I just want to say Jeremy did a great job, though. Like, 10, and, 10 for 10 in directors. Like, he, he did incredible. So. Well, thank you for coming out tonight, Matthew. A great job in the tournament. Uh, we put you backstage for now, and we will bring in our winner for this evening, Jeremy Adams. Jeremy, uh, you returned, at, obviously, at the beginning of this season, and you're now right back in title contention, punching your ticket into the title shot for the vacant title. What are your thoughts on uh, the match today and thoughts on playing it for a title? I mean, obviously, I feel really good. Um, you know, the, this match and the previous one, uh, you know, it – 
I think that it doesn't change my opinion of these players. You know, uh, Antonio and, and Matthew are both incredible players, and I just feel good just being able to keep up with them. But then also, you know, things going in my favor, getting a little lucky and being able to win, it it means a lot, but it doesn't take away from those guys. And I know I kind of – I can't rest on my laurels. I got to keep, you know, at it and, and be ready for that title shot because, uh, you know, the last time I tried a, a title match in this league, it, it kind of bit me with some of those other additional rounds. So I know I got to be ready and it's going to be tough, but I'm, I'm feeling good. And, and yeah, it was, it just, it just felt good today. Uh, two matches in a row. I feel like directors kind of won the match for me and, that's nice because, you know, it's one of those old standbys that's always been like in my back pocket, but it, it, the certain categories you can take for granted sometimes. It's like, I don't always think like, well, let's make directors my strength because I know a lot of guys are good with directors and data type stuff, but it always feels good when one of those old, old categories that you came into the league, you know, kind of feeling good with uh, can, can get you a couple really important win, wins in a tournament. So that feels good, but yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm excited. And uh, you know, to spend however many years out of this league and then to come back this quick and get another title shot when I went out losing a title shot, it, it, it just feels like a weird symmetry that I wasn't quite expecting. <laughs> yeah that's fair well uh speaking of said title shot uh we can reveal who you the mm -hmm. potential people who you will be playing so you'll be either facing the number nine seed i believe rookie sensation igor kosick or the number five seed david nishimoto so thoughts on either of those competitors um i i lost in a tournament to david in another league so I've definitely been been looking for that rematch. So I, I feel, you know, that's definitely something I'm kind of on the edge of my seat, both both being nervous about, but also really, really wanting because, uh, yeah, we, we had a really tight match in another league, but it just went his way. And I'm looking to uh, to be a little more ready and, and, and have a great title match with him. But I've also been watching Igor, you know, he, since he's come into, into these various leagues, I, I've been seeing this guy's really, really talented and, you know, like facing Matthew today, being able to face a younger player who's just got all the talent in the world against an old dog like me, it's exciting. And that would be a really awesome match as well. So whatever, whichever way it goes, I'm just uh, equally nervous in either case. And, uh, just hoping, uh, I, like I said, I can do better than my last time in this league. And if I at least do that, I'll feel good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, best of luck to that to you Thank when you so that much. match rolls around. I will put you backstage for now. And Jack, uh, we did it. We got through. Is the first uh, first semifinals match in the books. Uh, thoughts on today's match? Yeah, no. Uh, Matthew kept pace with Jeremy in round one, and Jeremy. Uh, former singles uh, champion. So that that in and of itself is an accomplishment there. Uh, Jeremy just got a category he was really good with, and Matthew got a category maybe he didn't wasn't 100% uh, happy with in round two. So that definitely played a huge part. But no, Matthew uh, played a good game today. He kept pace with Jeremy. Uh, and yeah, it just Jeremy came out on top. It was, uh, it was a very well fought match on both sides. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, well, thank you all for watching this. We will uh, end it off here. Uh, I have been Dylan Van Thine. This is my co-host, Jack Pinchuk. Thank you for joining me, Jack. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to the writers. Thank you to the showrunners, players, no managers because they didn't show up today. Uh, but thank you all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye. Fun storm in the castle. Think it'll work? If we take it, Bye.